Hey, go here. The brand new free to play four star icons have been officially revealed, so today we'll be going through them one by one. We'll look at how good they are, who they can work best on, and how they'll work. If anything changes or some info needs to be corrected, my pinned comment will have everything you need to know. Also, if this video helped, let others know and like and sub for more. Also, let me know your opinions on the like cones too, because maybe I missed something in the video. Now before we start, since a few of these new cones have effects that can activate mid wear a turn, let's explain the turn durations on that. Just a warning, this might not be the case for all light cones as Hoyuverse wording is pretty inconsistent. However, for most cones from what we know, when you gain a buff during your attack, say from Lune's signature light cone, it will buff the attack that causes it as it will activate before the use of the attack. Furthermore, you enter a grace period where your buff will not tick down. So as long as you activate it on your turn, you'll gain an effective extra action of buffs compared to the duration stated on the Lycone passive. Instead of two turns, you gain two turns plus your initial action. So let's start with my main man Sam's cone, Flames of Far, our destruction Lycone. So when the wearer attacks at least a quarter, 25% of their max HP in an enemy attack, or if the wearer consumes at least 25% of their max HP, they will activate the Lycone's effect. It will first give them a 15% max HP heal and then a 2 turn 25% damage buff. This effect can only be triggered once every 3 turns though. So this is a pretty niche one but it has a nice self sustain passive on top of a less conditional secret vow buff. You'll either have to tank large hits or have an ability that can consume a ton of HP. Going through the destruction roster we can pick out those that can use this, Blade and Clara. The rest have better options with Eon and this effect is unreliable outside of these two units. Arlen's HP consumption is unfortunately too small to activate this passive effect. For Blade, he will be consuming 30% of his max HP to enter the Hellscape state. This state starts on the turn he uses his skill and ends after 4 turns including the turn he starts it on. However, due to the buff activating during his skill, he will in fact be getting a 3 action buff, so his first 3 enhanced basics out of 4 per skill usage will receive this maximum damage buff. Any talents or ultimate activations in between will also receive said buff. This does mean though that his 4th enhanced basic won't be buffed but that's okay if you use all of your burst actions just before. In a vacuum calculation it is near on par with Secret Vow S5 at 50% uptime. 50% uptime is not even guaranteed to get due to our powerful sustain options so this cone is already amazing for blade enjoyers. His ult can also activate the light cone's condition but it should already be up by then from his skill. The self-sustained buff also means our healers need to put in less work and it means our subsequent attacks have more HP to consume to max out his ult's HP loss. For Clara, she can't consume her HP but she will be tanking a ton due to aggro increases. This is hard to calculate since we'd have to assume some pretty hefty attacks and often. Eon is just going to be better but for free to play Clara fans, this cone is a decent option in endgame content when you have a secondary destruction unit already using Eon. The problem on Clara is she will only activate this effect outside of her turn, meaning the buff will tick down as normal on her first turn. She does have tons of out of turn attacks though and she is very slow, so she could abuse this buff for a long time. If you do proc this every single time possible, this light cone can be competitive on Clara. Final Victor is our Hunt light cone and shows Aventurine with Dr. Asher. This cone will increase attack percent by 12% which is okay, and then it will give stacks of good fortune when the wearer lands a critical hit up to 4 stacks. These stacks will increase the wearer's crit damage by 8% per stack, and this is removed at the end of their turn. This cone is similar to Swordplay and Yanqing's signature where it buffs based on hits, meaning our first hit will receive an 8% crit damage buff, our second a 16% one, etc. This is also similar to the Grand Duke set too. This light cone can see the rise of higher crit rate builds where we compensate with this cone's crit damage. The buff is removed at the end of a turn, which means it will still be buffing stuff like follow-up attacks in the same action, like ratio skill into talent. It will also stay through Azela's resurgence and only be removed at the end of her resurgence turn. Any ultimates buffered before your turn end will also gain the crit damage accumulated. Furthermore, it looks for crits, not for hits specifically. This is major because for stuff like Sushang's sword stance, it won't be buffed or trigger sleep like the dead or swordplay, and it's why she doesn't work well for these cones. Stuff like Tingyan's Benediction also won't trigger it. However, Final Victor checks for crit hits, so Sushang's Sword Stance, if it crits, will be activating this crit damage buff. Tingyan Benediction procs will also accumulate stacks. Let's go through the Hunt characters one by one and see how it can work on them. So Zila has a 4 hit skill and Resurgence, and her final hit of her skill does 60% of the skill's total damage, 
so 8 receiving the max buff is great. She has a 1 hit ultimate though and if you use it at the start of your turn as intended it means her ult doesn't receive the big crit damage boost. Yan Qing has a 4 hit skill with equal distribution damage wise and his follow ups will get the buff. His ultimate is a 1 hit ultimate but you don't need to use it at the start of his turn, instead using it when he gets it at the end of his turn for a big damage spike. He already gets a ton of crit buffs though so that's why something like swordplay can be nicer. Dan Hung has a 4 hit skill with damage skewed on the first and final hits. The only problem is when you want to use your ultimate with the res pen buff as you'd want to use it before his skill steals the res penetration. His ult is a 1 hit attack just like Zeela's so you get the same problem. Sushong has a 2 hit skill with several sword stance hits that can occur. Sword stance can be a lot of additional damage and doesn't proc sword play, but can proc final victor if it crits. I think this is a great free to play light cone for Sushong, though she won't retain stacks after her ult combo as it doesn't count as an extra turn, it just advances her forward. Topaz can use this as an awesome free to play light cone as Numbi has 7 to 8 hits. Numbi will thus permanently buff Topaz's turns as he's guaranteed to act in between her turns unless you're using someone like a Bronya with her. Dr. Ratio I would say is the worst user of this light cone as his one hit attacks will not do much for him. However, with Ting Yun on his team, he can use this cone a little better, but the lack of instant crit damage and only a small attack buff isn't great compared to other options. Only ultimate follow-ups can pre-stack the buff for his next turn too, and he has to crit on both his one hit attack and Ting Yun's benediction procs for maximum buffs. So when used right, this can be a decent alternative to Stella Sea on anyone really, especially over River Flows in Spring. I don't think it's a massive new upgrade for Hunt units though. The day the Cosmos fell is next, our Erudition Cone. Despite Breakfast being a great free to play option, people are begging for something with a little more power. It gives an initial 16% attack buff to the wearer. Then if the wearer attacks at least two enemies with their corresponding weakness, they gain a two turn 20% crit damage buff but it will last for 3 actions since it activates mid attack and will not take down at the end of their turn. This thus has a pretty easy uptime and can even stick on when there are not enough enemies due to the buff duration. This cone is worse or much better than breakfast depending on your situation. For Ching Shui when considering no crit damage or damage percent buffers it's 6% better than breakfast as she is spamming damage percent out the wazir. Switching you on in the same scenario, it's worse by around 2%, but when considering a Ruwa Mei, this cone becomes nearly 3% better. With the amount of damage percent we can get from allies, this cone is thus a new best in slot for free to play accounts over breakfast. Dreamville Adventure is our free Harmony Light Cone for Penaconi. After the wearer uses a basic, skill, or ultimate, all allies will gain a childishness buff depending on said action, which will increase the damage percent of the corresponding action by 12%. This has no turn duration and is permanent and will only change if your harmony unit does a different action. What this means is if my Ting Yun uses her skill on an ally, all allies gain a 12% skill damage buff. Basics and ultimates will not be buffed. If she then uses her basic next turn, all allies then receive a 12% basic attack damage buff instead, replacing the former skill damage boost. So this current can be nice in dual DPS comps, but outside of that the damage boost is pretty weak for just one ally even if we consider S5, and past and future for example will be better if you speed tune correctly. It also requires strategic use of abilities to match your harmony to your DPS. And if your dual DPS setup or even your one DPS uses a different ability to your harmony or to the other DPS, then you have a mismatch of buffs and you won't gain any benefit from this cone. In autoplay, good luck to you. I don't really like this cone, especially with mesh and cogs existing, but let me know below if you have any cool ideas for it. Next up is the Nihility Cone, it's showtime. When the wearer inflicts a debuff on an enemy, they will gain a stack of trick for one turn up to three stacks. It reminds me a bit of the new debuffer set. This trick stack will grant the wearer a 6% damage buff. Then when the wearer has at least 80% effect hero in stats, you'll gain a 20% attack boost. So this cone will want you constantly applying debuffs to ensure uptime. It doesn't state you need to specifically apply it with an attack either. It should work like other stack based light cones, for example Lune's Signature, in which as long as you fulfill the condition, you'll gain the maximum bonus accumulated thus far. Meaning if you only apply one debuff, you'll keep the three stacks from previously applied debuffs. The effect hit rate needs however are pretty dumb for the second bonus and without the second bonus, the cone is really not amazing. Without the attack percent buff this is just a weaker for Marta and would only be better if you're not paired with a unit that can apply Wind Shear or Shock. 
So Kafka wants 29% effect hit rate, Welt wants around 43% at max, Gunaifen, Luca, Sampo all want 67%, Pella wants 57% effect hit rate, Silverwolf will want 97%, but this is a DPS cone, so ideally she doesn't equip it. At E2 she can go for that crit DPS build, but at E2 she only needs 48% effect hit rate. Acheron and Black Swan are upcoming now hit units and I'm guessing this cone is going to suit them instead. The only way I see it being used right now is on the 4 star dot sub DPS. They want 67% effect hit rate, but if you remove 13% attack in subsets to instead reach 80% effect hit rate, you're gaining 20% attack at just S1, which is a very good deal despite the wasted stats. Sampo in fact doesn't even mind going above 67% effect hit rate, it's just not ideal outside of this cone. The preservation Lycone for Panacone is Destiny's Threads for Woven, we get a 12% effect res buff and a damage percent increase. For every 100 defense the wearer has we get a damage percent increase of 0.8% up to 32%. Maths tells us we need 4,000 defense to max this out, which we probably won't be doing, as other stats are important. We also won't be doing this on March, Fire MC, Fushuan, or Jepard, as none of them have strong DPS capabilities. For a fun preservation DPS cone, you can use this, I guess, but otherwise, the gacha preservation options are so much stronger, and the three star preservation cones are much more useful for tanking. This is likely hinting to Aventurine being a proper preservation sub DPS with actual damage capabilities which is kind of exciting. Until now though this cone is pretty dead, only the effect resistance is nice. What is real is our final cone and this cone belongs to Gallagher, a 4 star fire abundance unit coming in 2.1. It will increase the wearer's break effect by 24%. Then the wearer's basic attacks will restore 2% of their own max HP plus 800 on top. This is actually a very sizable heal even at S1 but only for the wearer themselves. It means they wouldn't have to worry about themselves and can focus on the team. In my eyes, multiplication is just better at high investment if you are spamming basic attacks, but this provides a different niche to those basic attack spammers. The break effect on top is not useful for any healer barring Luwatcher as they all have next to zero toughness damage. On Luwatcher it would mean additional delay if he breaks enemy toughness, but again multiplication is just better and his self healing is already enough. This cone is not great and I guess is designed for Gallagher. Maybe he can do some big break damage as a fire unit, and this cone can help out with that. We'll see you soon in the 2.1 livestream. So overall the cones have some nice advantages, some aren't that great just yet, but may see use with Panacone's roster being fully released, much like some of Genshin's craftable weapons. Let me know below which ones are your favourite and what kind of ways we could use them. Thank you to my awesome YouTube members, thanks for watching and have a good day.